We talk a lot about mind and hand at MIT. The Edgerton Center really embodies those two things together. The Edgerton Center is an amazing community. You have students from all across the school, completely different majors, come together and work on one system, one engineering project. This is where the magic happens. The center encourages you to take risks. It provides this space where you can try things out and you never get it right the first time around. A person has to have these opportunities to be encouraged, to be able to make mistakes. So a space like this is just an amazing thing. The Edgerton Center is a mixture of art and science. No matter what engineering you learn and science you learn, you have to test it in real life. And Edgerton himself was a massive experimenter, and you can feel that ethos in the room when you come in here. It's like being given a huge Lego box. It's just an infinite set of possibilities. Of course, everything you learn in the classroom is super useful. But here's where you actually have to apply it. It's not like a problem set where you get the answers in a week. You come here and you see, oh, that heat transfer equation I learned in thermo, I can use it to make the brake rotors and design them as lightweight as possible. Taking ownership of a project is more like the real world than anything else at MIT that I'm going to experience. And after the end of it, I can like point to that thing and be like, I built that. That's mine. So many hours spent in this room. So this is up on the fourth floor called Strobe Alley at MIT, where the Edgerton Center exists. Up till the time I took Strobe Lab, I was always trying to figure out ways to mix art and science together. They existed as kind of separate worlds. And in technological imaging, you have to do a lot of engineering to make the image that you want to see. And so from the beginning of an aesthetic or artistic pursuit, you have to back out all the engineering problems you're going to have to solve to make that happen. If it's off by two degrees, you don't get anything like this. And that's something that you can't plan. It's four steps away, so nothing in your brain knows that it even exists until the exploration happens. This kind of stuff was totally done through just random play and experimentation in the Edgerton Center. We're at the Area 51 Edgerton shop. Everything from a Hyperloop team to a robotics team all works in here. I'm on MIT's solar car team. We design, build, and race cars powered entirely by the sun, which is super cool. And we're designing a car to race in Australia in 2017. It's a 3,000 kilometer race to the Australian Outback. And our car drives up to 65 miles an hour. By the time I graduate, I will have built and worked on four cars. Every year, we start from scratch. Joining this team really brought to life everything I was learning in classes. And now I'm passionate about working in engineering. I've accepted a job offer. Next year, I'll be working in the automotive industry. One of the things that Doc Edgerton did, which is one of the great moments of my life, is give me a key to this lab. That key became the most precious possession. I learned so much about life, philosophy, technology. Doc was an amazing individual in so many ways. So having that spirit of mentorship means a lot to me. My name is Andrew Adams. I am the president of the MIT Rocket Team, which is really the heart and soul of why I'm here. Everything from the tubes, to the nose cone, to the propellant itself, to the flight computers, all aspects of the project, student designed and built. You're walking up to the launch pad. You're running through your mental checklist. All the crazy possibilities pop in your mind. Flight computer's not gonna work. The propulsion system's gonna blow up. And then everybody stands back. You see it go up, just pure euphoria hits. You put everything you've got into it, and it just did its job. I found my family here. If I were to go back and ask my 14-year-old self, like, what, what do you want to be doing in college? It's like, I want to be building things. That's what I'm doing now. Again, you can talk about it or you can do something. You know, Doc was always telling people, well, just try it out and to learn in doing that so that you can revise your approach and try it again. We're looking for life on Mars. Doing that through a NASA-funded project to build an instrument that could be deployed on a future rover mission. That's something no one's ever done. It's a major endeavor. It's going to take a lot of time. There's a risk of failure. A lot of different disciplines working together. And those are all things that I learned with the solar car team in the Edgerton Center. Nothing has had more of a profound effect on me than the Edgerton Center. This is one of the world's first maker spaces. It's a world that's precious. I will always be a student of Edgerton.
And I used to tell people, if you don't wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and want to do something, well, yeah, you're wasting time. Time is very precious. We're wasting it right now. 